Welcome to episode two, commentary, Bay Area sound commentary, audio commentary. This is Jared Emerson Johnson, music, sound, and voice direction. Thanks for listening. This is Julian Kwasniewski, sound effects and voice directing. We are happy to provide you with commentary. Background sequence now in orange, the beginning of a of a trend that I, I believe it was, well, I'm not sure actually who came up with that idea. I know but it's Jake, a good idea. Jake did it. It is a very good idea, and it always let's credit cool, Jake. and then at the very end, let's credit Jake. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> not no, Thank you, Jake. I think Dan, Dan did it. It was probably I Dan. Dan, the master, the master of all. The CEO of the company, actually, he's their head animator, and he is all the voices in the game. Just kidding. And here's our... Uh, Here's our little spaghetti western sequence. I really was happy to see that they were starting each of these with a little genre piece. I, th- I believe I said that in the other commentaries I did with the programmers and artists, but this is a great piece of music. And this is the first uh, debut of the voice of William Caston, who Hello. took over Max in this from this episode on and did an excellent job. And we just, yeah, we couldn't be happier with him. He, he really... Uh, Great person as well, and really into the project. He's another guy we fly up for the for the recordings from L.A. because he's so incredible. This is that little Sam and Max theme that just kind of comes in whenever they're they're doing their doing their solo thing. You know, it's it's not really necessarily related to any of the cases that they're on. It's just sort of them hanging out, doing their banter. You'll notice it in cutscenes and here and there whenever they're they're just sort of rocking their little duo thing. I think we've got to drive over to the station right away. We're at our earliest convenience. Great! I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. So you can hear now that the voice, uh, you know, from a processing standpoint. Um, with all, it was about 2,500 to 3,000 lines per, per episode. episode yeah. And um, so within that, you have lines like this that are coming over the TV. And um, so we need to process them accordingly. So we came, through the course of the projects, we came up with a variety of processes for the PA horn. Uh, we have over the TV, uh, there's people talking on the telephone, um, <coughs> speaker phones. Uh, the, po- the mic podiums for the debates and um, the cops in episode five. And uh, so, you know, and what it means is just a, a really high level of tracking on our part. We have, um, you know, we work with uh, Brendan and Dave and we identify which lines are going to need processing. And then doing our play tests of the game, we realize that those lists are usually not complete. And you, uh, you know, you'll hear a line that comes over the TV. It's like, hey, that's not supposed to be uh, dry. And, um, so we track that, and you know, ultimately, when, um, if and when these were to be translated into other languages, um, all that work needs to be repeated, and oftentimes that doesn't happen for many months or years after the title ships. Uh, although it's much quicker these days, but um, so you know, any, anytime we do this stuff, we uh, we have to kind of document what we do and be able to recreate it at any time. Thank you. Thank you. That last scene uh, in Bosco's is one of the few scenes where Jimmy and Bosco are in the same okay, shot, even interacting with each other a little bit, and, and uh, they are both, believe it or not, voiced by the same yep. same man, Joey Kamen, two very different voices, but both uh, and it, it both totally very funny works. and effective, and it's always funny when that happens, and, and especially when it works as well as it does in that scene. You call that emotion? I've seen Myra show more emotion, and she ought to be declared an actual Botox! All of the uh, cutscene music in episode two was a little bit darker because I know the original design of the of the uh, TV studio was meant to feel very kind of eerie and abandoned and you're not sure why nobody's there you know you're expecting it to be hustling and bustling and of course the reason is because everybody's quarantined and Myra's set and she won't let them out and and uh, so all these all the cutscene music is very it's a little bit darker and more kind of atmospheric and Force and strange in this. And, and that also then, of course, contrasts with the incredible manic nature of all the TV show themes, which are just pretty silly. I believe we'll be hearing them shortly. How did you do the sound effects? You really don't want to know. You don't want to believe me. The search for the Midtown Cowboys is over. You're hired. 
head to the set next door and we can begin filming immediately. Let's hurry, Sam. We only have 14 minutes and 55 seconds of fame left. Okay. Okay, here we go. The first uh, TV show theme. You don't want him to know you've got a cow in there. Ready? Action! That's Is that me. you singing? That's me singing. That's, That's awesome. me on the violin at the beginning there, playing the fiddle. And this is uh, uh, David Boyle, Boyle yeah. as uh, Mr. Featherly slash Philo Pennyworth. Also um, does the voice of Hugh Bliss, who, as we find out, is playing a larger role in this whole hypnosis scheme. We decided early on to, to uh, have all these sitcom sequences just be sound effects only. But I mean, obviously, it's it's more authentic, but it's also just funnier in the in the context of the scene to have have the silence and waiting for that laugh track and the applause and stuff. He said It's a French dish the chef has just made. Super. I'll try some of that. Where's the plate? I can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. That is so harsh. I, I know. Uh, Featherly. Hmm, interesting. That's one way for it. I really love his scarf. There's a familiar flavor. Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this moo moo whatever stuff is really good. What's it called in English? The writing in this is so perfectly That's sitcom. It's, it's, yeah. it's incredible. Like it. <laughs> and much, the laugh track much timing props to is, uh, Dave and Brendan for this. It's just yeah, definitely. <laughs> On all the little reaction shots, are awesome. <laughs> and that goes on just a little bit too long. Now, now, <clears throat> better get the serious toothpaste. Do it. The network is going to love it. I love the little wing flaps for Featherly getting up there on the cow. Don't call me for at least an hour. What's great about this is that um, Telltale has a great tool for implementing audio so you know we can um, basically play the game and when we identify a sound that's needed um, from identifying it to actually getting it in the game assuming it's easy to make and we have it um, really gives us a lot of power over um, the soundtrack. And so even though it's a downloadable title, we still have, uh, you know, we, we're we not treating it any differently. And uh, there's really no limitations um, that we're not used to already. Yeah, it's very, very simple implementation, drag and drop, designed by the illustrious Kevin Bruner. Oh, greetings, worshipful fans. Who's a... Uh, also a keyboardist. A don't very, tell him I told very you. accomplished keyboardist. And accordionist, I believe. He has an accordion. This music was my takeoff on the frugal gourmet. Uh, uh, I would think it's a bourree by Handel from Water Music, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't seen the show since the 80s, but I, um, I remember thinking it was just so funny and and very PBS to have have that little baroque yeah. opener to the cooking show and this is my sort of salmon maxified slightly insane manic version of that baroque sound with the trumpet just wailing up high there that's uh, Mike Whitwell on trumpet he's an incredible guy we're very lucky to have him he's he's played with everybody and he, whenever it's always great to have him in the studio cuz he's always it's one of those cool jazz cats who always has stories about crazy people he's played with over the years. And, and, uh, that was the sound of my oven, too. <laughs> Slamming across the country. This is a great one. Yes, This music you're hearing here, believe it or not, it's a, it's a sort of a secret little um, homage to a friend of mine that I had in college. Who um, it's, a, it's very similar to a music I wrote for a student film she made. Um, that took place on a game show, and it was a little shout out to my friend Gia. Oh oh Hi, Gia. My. Hey, Gia. That's absolutely right. I loved the implementation of this music because in every one of these scenes, the little 
game show theme just it kind of just keeps coming back and playing over and over again just when you think it's about to be over it plays another time and I love it just that. gives you the impression that they have this one you know 20 second track of music that they had commissioned for this terrible terrible game show that they can't really do anything except play it over and over again and to give you a million dollars worth of food. I, I just thought that was hilarious. Right the sort of low techness of this WARP TV place. Ropes with food stamps? And that <laughs> ridiculous explosion that happens. One, two, three, 174, 175. What I is that I thing I in the background there? I've just always wondered. The guy with yeah. the barrel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, Someone knows. I love it. It's somebody's grandpa or something. And here's my uh, favorite little soda poppers theme is about to sneak in there. It's it's sort of the screwing with the soda poppers music. I any time that Sam and Max are doing something to like emotionally or physically abuse the soda poppers, you can hear that. And, uh, you sort of hear little snippets in this episode, and then in episode four, when the, it's the ultimate thing after Wizards in AA, and and uh, they're giving him the bottle of vodka to chug. You hear the full version of it with the whole. A and B sections wait, together, and it's a, it? be going to see sort of a drunken, well, anyway, we can't wait. We'll sleazy, almost circusy you sounding piece of music. I love it. Vote for me. The and first and hopefully not last bit of techno that has appeared in Sam and Max. Hello. I'd like to this was fun. We we had to um, pitch them without changing the duration. So. Right. Yeah, this is one of those voice yeah. voice tech things where, you know, he had to be able to sing everything both heliumed and not heliumed and and have it be in tune with the music still. Right. One of those fun asset tracking games. Yeah, it works. I uh, hadn't heard it in a while. It works well. And let's hear from our judges. Bravo. Your wobbly tenor is way better than Peeper's shrill squawking. I love that he hasn't taken off his glasses. I know, it's he's great. Just, he's just, <laughs> just dealing with it. He's, the show must go on for specs. He's a total professional. I remember the moves, too. We had I moo know. requests. I love it. And I, we had to have, like, a happy moo and an right. upset moo. And I like they're that all Bessie, cows. I like that Bessie is just a cow, you know. She, she's on the talk show and... You know, not like Featherly or the Mole Man who actually speaks. She's she's just the cow, mooing, like eating stuff. And you're about to hear a sort of second version of the Th Sam and Max theme that you hear in the office. It's sort of the more upbeat, kind of funkified version. And I, I created it for this, for the Myra set, meant to sound like, you know, like a, a talk show band playing their version of someone's theme. And uh, it ended up uh, ended up using it in a number of other spots uh, in different orchestration. Whenever it was sort of Sam and Max doing something badass or something. This is Dorothy Gallagher who yep. plays Myra. She's great. She's a great eccentric, very uh, bright personality. And she sounds and acts exactly how you see exactly. here. Exactly. It's, it is <laughs> like, exactly like Myra. She's like, oh, I, I know what you want. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple more. I'm going to give you a couple more here. Okay, I think I know what you want. And then she nails it. And then she nails it, of course. I'm very glad they they included the fact that Sam plays the banjo in the season. I was I don't I can't remember. I don't think it appeared anywhere in Hit the Road. Um, I was battering this person at you but, uh, parking meter yeah. and screaming, I think it's a very important part of Sam's characterization. Sam said, you Only up, a very specific buddy. type of the person plays the banjo, and Sam is definitely that type. Sam up. Here's Bessie again, and that is just very harsh. And Bessie's out of here. But what's this? At the risk of and this is the sort of wrapping everything up shocking. music theme. It, it appears in various different yep. incarnations at the end. Tune of, in next week. Yep. And uh, comes into sort of d transitions into the, the hypnosis theme that comes in, or that sort of devious something even more sinister is is coming down the line. This is still just the regular wrapping it up theme, <laughs> but the uh, the plot thickens theme is coming up. It's got that thing with the vibes and the. Trombones. Of things, we're not Here it is. 
There's a new restaurant at the zoo where you can eat what they feed the animals. Empty popcorn. Oh, and that heart. <laughs> she's she's not dead, see? No. So, it's a family game. All right, thanks for watching episode two. Cooking show set and see if we can figure out how to make fried pork rinds. Okay, but I get the feet.